Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to connect our Flask application to the database using SQL Alchemy. First we need to install some dependencies. The first one is going to be uh, Flask SQL Alchemy. So I'm going to say install uh, Flask underscore SQL Alchemy. Oops, uh, I mistyped that just say SQL Alchemy there we go so this is the one now the SQL Alchemy this extension this Flask SQL Alchemy extension is going to allow us to connect our Flask application to our database and also this is going to allow us to write SQL Alchemy in our Flask code the next step is going to be uh, to install uh, to well we have actually installed it so let's go ahead and let's import now down here I'm gonna say from uh, flask flask da underscore underscore SQL alchemy uh, import SQL alchemy just save this it should let me just say pep env shell is it it is activated so let me take a look at the pep file. So we have SQL Flask SQL Alchemy. Yeah, it has been installed. So we have Psychop G2 binary, SQL Alchemy, Flask, and Flask SQL Alchemy. So that's okay. Everything is working perfectly fine. Now, uh, the next step would be to configure the SQL Alchemy database URI. A database URI is a URI describing a database connection, also called a connection string. The connection string allows us to connect our Postgres database to our Flask application. So beneath this app, what I would like to do here is I'm going to grab the app and I'm going to say config config and I'm going to pass in the SQL Alchemy. So SQL Alchemy underscore database underscore URI URI and this is going to be equal to uh, the same thing that we created the engine with so we need to pass in the type of the database it's going to be Postgres SQL uh, SQL and then where it is so for, then we need to pass in the credentials to be able to log in so Postgres uh, at this is the password where is the local host it's right here where is the port 5234 and finally what is the name of the database it's block poster so now that we have provided that we need to create a secret key the secret key allows us to securely use SQL Alchemy sessions in our flask application now to uh, to be able to interact with the database we need to obtain its handle a session object is the handle to the database and uh, the secret key is going to be something that we need to create by ourselves so in here I'm going to type in Python uh, let me just bring this up so on Mac you're gonna need to type in Python 3 and now we are within the interactive Python shell in here I'm gonna import OS or operating system from there um, this OS module in Python provides functions for interacting with the operating system OS comes under Python standard standard utility utility modules this module provides a portable way of using operating system dependent functionality why do we need this we need it because we need to generate a random binary and uh, we are going to use an a u random method so it's os dot u random and then we need to specify the size of that random binary that we want let's say we want it to be 24 bytes in, in maximum so this is going to provide us with a string containing random characters there we go and this is going to be our uh, secret key so I'm going to grab this uh, everything without the B so when I grab it uh, let's go ahead and let's create that secret key 
So I'm going to say app.config and let's say secret key. Let's set it to equal to this. There we go. So now that we have generated our secret key as well, let's go ahead and let's uh, create a database object. This is going to, I'm going to name it DB. Let's grab SQL Alchemy. Um, this should be capital SQL Alchemy. Hmm. We need to import the capital SQL Alchemy. It's not, it shouldn't be lowercase. So SQL Alchemy. There we go. SQL Alchemy. Hmm. Flask underscore SQL Alchemy should have imported it. Anyways, let's move on. So we have here our SQL Alchemy, and let's pass in the app as the parameter. Next up, I'm going to create a class for our topic to reference the topics in our Flask application. Uh, and then we are going to base this model, uh, uh, aside from the declarative base, we are going to base it on the model class itself. Now, here you have two approaches. You can base your classes like in our database, oops, in this database you can base them on, where is our declarative base? You can base them on declarative base or you can go ahead and base them on the model itself. There is no difference aside from like a little bit more functionality when it comes to the model. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go both ways so you really understand what is happening. So we are going to grab our database and then from there we're going to grab the model class. So if you pass in this model class or the declarative base, there is no problem. Let's create the table name. And I'm going to name it topics. Uh, what is going to be the uh, columns? First we're going to have the topic ID. This is going to be db.column. So now uh, everything is within the DB, so we have db.column, then we're going to have db.integer, and then let's provide the primary key, primary key, set it to true. So this is going to be the primary key, let's pass in the title as well, db.column, okay, column, come on buddy, column. And it's going to be db.string with a length of 255. Now, I'm going to create a another view function. And its job is going to be to show all the topics from our database into our home.html page. So I'm going to say app.route. What is going to be the... Um, the URL, it's going to be basically the root URL. So I don't really have to create it because uh, we do have that root URL here. So I'm just going to modify this one. I'm not going to create another conflicting root URL. I kind of forgot that we already had a root URL. And uh, let's just create it. So I'm going to pass in topics. And this topic is going to grab uh, the topic class. It's going to query it. And it's going to grab all the items from there. So now that we have selected all of our items, we need to go to our home.html. We can see here we have all of this static data. Let's change it with dynamic data. So let me just get out of here first. There we go. Let me clear the console. So let's change this data with some static data. So I'm just going to get rid of this. So whenever we are retrieving data from the database, we don't know how many records it is there are that we want to retrieve. So the proper way is to loop through all the records. And as many records there are, those many items will be shown on the screen. And we know how we can loop through. We have this... Um, um, we, we have for loops in our templates as well. So I'm going to say for topic in topics where is this topics coming from this is the template variable that we have provided and what is this topic singular topic this is the loop agent or loop variable we are going to have an anchor element the anchor element is going to go to topic slash now the topic is going to be uh, different each time so when the for loop runs for the first time it's going to grab 
a topic with uh, its ID, which is going to be one or whatever. Then the second time the loop is going to run, it's going to grab another topic with another ID. So the topic ID has it should not be like very uh, should not be static. It should be dynamic. So I'm going to pass in topic dot topic ID based on the topic that has been retrieved from the database. We want to grab its ID and show it in the URL address bar. And for the actual content, what do we want to show on the browser? Uh, it is going to be the title and we can access it using the topic which is the loop a loop agent or loop variable topic dot title this topic which is this loop variable is going to hold all the information that we need so it's going to hold information about the topic id topic title and all that cool stuff and then we need to close our loop as well and for end our loop basically now um i guess we are done so let's go ahead and let's execute this application let me rename this copy that put it right here dot pi there we go so our server is running if i come in here we should be able uh to see an error that says unknown host so let me just close that one sql alchemy .xt operational error error background this error sql alchemy operational error, error so where is this error coming from we have post grass post grass one two three four five seven eight local we have missed an l i have missed an l so let me just save that let's come here run the page there we go very 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 cool so where is this flask server is not running coming from it's coming from our database so within our database we have this flask server not running if i click on it we go to that same topic uh topics page in which we have all of these static tasks tasks page in which we have all these static tasks uh, we are going to replace all these static tasks with dynamic tasks which are going to be consumed from the database in our next lecture so in the next lecture we basically want to show this on the screen so so far we have come a lot uh, we have come a long way um so we have our topics which are coming from our database uh, next up we are going to make sure that all the tasks are also shown and then we are going to implement this topic addition as well as task addition and the topic deletion functionalities so with this our lecture comes to an end see you in the next one